Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, welcome everybody. How are you today on this fine Monday? Today is the 25th of September. So can you believe we are nearing the end of September? I feel like I say this all the time, but time just goes so quickly. And before we know it, we're rolling over into a new month, a new month. So when I go live next week, let me just see. Yes, when I go live next week, we'll be in October. So crazy. <laughs> um, so it is great to be here for another um, crafting session for you. I have got a really pretty card to share with you today um, using the Translucent Florals Bundle and the brand new um, Delightful Florals DSP from the online exclusives. So I look forward to sharing that with you. Now, while everybody is um, jumping on and finding their notifications, I'm just going to bring this up on my um, devices so that I can see all of your comments. So bear with me one moment and I'll get this all happening. Now I have got hubby working from home today. So um, I did ask him to, if he could possibly not be on the internet so that we don't have any issues today. Um, and he said that he might be able to hotspot to his work phone while I'm filming. So that will be awesome. So hopefully that all goes well because um, we don't want extra lag on our on our feed because our crafting time is important isn't it <laughs> so I said to him I need you not to be online so yeah so it was good that he was he was able to do that so hopefully he has I, because he was on a call when I just went to go live so I didn't have a chance usually I call out to him telling him I'm going live but um I didn't have a chance to today because he was on the phone so hopefully he has um, remembered and yeah, we'll switch over. So anyway, hi Rose, how are you? Um, looks like I'm getting ready for Christmas. Yes, yes, I have um, started to create some Christmas projects and I've got a Christmas class coming up as well, which is closing tomorrow. I'll tell you a little bit about that very soon. But, um, but yes, time to start getting ready for Christmas because next week will be in October and then we will actually today, today is the 25th, isn't it? Yes, today is the 25th, September, October, November, three months exactly to the day today until Christmas. So that'll come around really quickly. <laughs> hey, Julie, how are you? Now, how was your weekend, ladies? Let me know in the comments how you um, spent your weekends what you got up to. Now I have got um, my beautiful Erstwilder um, starfish earrings on today and you might notice if I sit up a little bit straighter you'll see my little sage the seal. Isn't he just adorable? So um, I thought I'd wear my starfish earrings because I've got sea life on my clothes. So, so this is um, a beautiful brooch by Erstwilder and no I'm not affiliated with them or anything but I love their, their brooches and jewellery. Um, and I recently bought a whole heap of um, brooches from them and they had a sea life um, theme that they released and so um, I bought some of those because of course I love sea life my daughter works with sea life so um, yeah so I bought that so I, I wore my little sage the seal today so he's just super super adorable he's very cute <laughs> so I love him um, yeah so just a bit of fun. Um, their brooches are gorgeous. They are basically wearable art. So they're all um, beautifully created, um, hand designed, hand, some of them are hand painted as well. And um, they've got multiple layers and all different sorts of things. But yeah, they're basically wearable art. And I love being creative. I love creativity. I love anything artistic. And so when I found them, I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to have them. And also to, oh, I've got something in my eye. Also, too, um, my mum used to love to wear brooches. Not this kind of brooches. She would wear, wear like the fancy, you know, the fancy brooches. Um, but they're still they're still lovely and wearable art, I suppose. So yeah, so there you go. So I just thought, well, I'm going to get into brooches, and I like I'm into dangly earrings at the moment too. <laughs> um, oh, you thought they were Christmas stars? Well, you know what? Now that you say that, Rose, 
they probably could double as Christmas stars. They're actually, yeah, they're actually starfish. Um, but I could wear them as Chris at Christmas as Christmas stars, but they'll probably bring out a Christmas range, so I probably won't be able to help myself. Um, but uh, but yeah, I probably could. But no, they're actually starfish. <laughs> they had some um, seaweed ones as well, or like seagrass ones as well, but I didn't get those ones. They were um, sort of in bright colours that I don't normally wear, so I thought I'd go a bit more subtle. <laughs> uh, Julie said Saturday they went... Um, Saturday I went to get my bridesmaid's dress altered, ready for my sister's upcoming wedding. Oh, so exciting. Then on Sunday, we went to visit Anthony's mum, who just came out of hospital. Oh, I hope she's doing okay. She must be doing better if she's come out of hospital. So that's good news. Yeah. Oh, I'll keep her in my thoughts and prayers. I hope she's um, hope she's recovering well. But um, But your sister's wedding, oh my goodness. How long till the wedding? It must be coming up really soon. How exciting. <laughs> um, so um, let me know. Yeah, have a chat with me. We, we come along to craft, but also to chat. Um, chatting with each other and, you know, sharing, sharing with each other is part of my lives. Now, if you are watching the replay, first of all, if you're here live, you will see the red live button up above. Um, in the top left hand corner. If you don't see that, then you'll be watching the replay. I will put this video over onto YouTube as well um, this evening. Now, if you are watching the replay and you wanna fast forward through the chitter chatter, feel free to do that. Um, but we are live at the moment here on Facebook. Every Monday we go live on Facebook in my business page. And uh, we like to have a chat and connect with each other. And that's part of going live. So, but if, yeah, if you don't want that part, just feel free to fast forward through to the crafting time. Um, so on Saturday, let me tell you, you might have seen my post actually yesterday, but on Saturday I had one of my beautiful friends come over. Um, we've been friends since the kids were really little. I think um, we met through play group when my youngest, which is her oldest, were... Now they must have been, were they three or were they under three? They must have, no, they must have been really young. They must have been under three because when they turned three, they went to preschool. So yeah, so we've known each other for like 20, probably like 25 years or something. And, uh, and we used to craft together back in the day when the kids were little and when the kids were at school. Um, we'd get together during the day while the kids were at school and we'd craft together. And, um, you know, then we both went off to work and things like that and and so we didn't see as much of each other but uh, but yeah we try to get together every so often to to um, catch up and have a cuppa or uh, or craft together and uh, so we started on our Christmas cards on the weekend well I had made one last Monday on my live but um, and I've and we've got the ones designed for the class but uh, yeah so we made some Christmas cards together which was super awesome we had lots of um, chats, which was great. It's always great to catch up. And we took half the day just deciding what we were going to create with because <laughs> my friend just had so many ideas um, and so many different things that she wanted to create with. And then we whittled it down and then we, we got down to it and um, she made a tag card. And it was so beautiful. It turned out really, really beautiful. And... Um, yeah, and the one that I made, I might share in a couple of weeks with you all. So I'm not going to share it today because um, I might keep it up my sleeve for a future live in the next few weeks. Um, so that was really good. She made me a beautiful um, gluten-free banana bread, which was so yummy, and she left the leftovers with me. So um, so that's been afternoon tea uh, yesterday as well, and will be today. And um, Amber also made some Anzac biscuits, both gluten-free ones and ordinary ones, because my friend, her favorite thing is our um, Anzac biscuits, homemade Anzac biscuits. So um, yeah, Amber made some of those. We had fruit, we had chocolate, of course, and it was just a really, really lovely day. So just great to catch up with friends. So tell me, now, I, I know Rose's answer to this because I did ask this in my um, in my post yesterday and Rose answered, but feel free to answer again today, Rose, so that you can share with everybody else. 
but tell me everybody, when did you last get together with your friends or family um, to craft together? When did you when did you gather with your with your loved ones to craft? When was the last time you you got together to do that? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. Um, hey Zana, good morning. Oh, 7:12 a.m. there. Well, that's fairly decent time. That's not too early. Great to have you with us, Zana. How are you? How are things over there in the UK? Let us know what's happening with the weather over there right now. So we just. We have just gone into spring and we've had some very warm weather and then it turned cold again. We've had wind, we've had we've had all the seasons, I think. And then yes, it's today's sort of nice temperature. It was it was getting up to about 27 degrees Celsius today. It's been nice and sunny. Um, right now it's mm, partially overcast. I don't know, maybe the sun has just gone behind a cloud for a moment. But um, yeah, it's sort of September is one of those months where it's just a bit um, very changeable, seasonably changeable, let's say that. <laughs> yeah, so let me know, when did you last get together with your friends or family to um, craft? Let me know in the comments. And if you're watching the replay, feel free to play along as well. And you can also answer in the comments. So those of you who are watching the replay, I do try to go back to respond to message uh, to comments. Um, sometimes Facebook hides them. So sometimes I've got to go in a couple of times till I find them all. Um, if I don't respond to yours, please don't feel offended. It might just be that Facebook has hidden them, that I can't see them. Because sometimes they only highlight certain ones. They don't show all. So then I've got to go and click on show all comments. And yeah, sometimes they still hide them. So I try, I try, I try to answer all of them. Um, all right. So let's, so that's what's been happening. And then yesterday, yesterday I had a cruisy day. Hadn't slept well the night before. So had a sleep in, um, had a bit of a cruisy day, watched some training videos that I'm catching up on. Um, yeah, and that was really it. That's pretty much it. Just had a really cruisy day yesterday, um, which was good. Amber went out, John took her, um, to go to the shops and do a few things running around and stuff, but I was able to just stay at home with Callie and just chill. <laughs> so it was good. All right. So let me tell you, um, now you've probably seen me mention this a little bit lately, but have you seen in the online store? the um, online exclusives in the online exclusives there's a special release of designer series papers now we're going to use one of those today so that's why i want to share that again with you today um, if you haven't checked them out go over and check out the online exclusives you'll find some of these gorgeous papers there's just a little snippet in there of them all but you really can't um, see them all terribly well in this paper we're actually going to be using the new floral one up here which is called the Delightful Florals, and it coordinates with the um, Translucent Florals Bundle. So originally those papers, um, they were designed for the second celebration that didn't end up going ahead this year. So Stampin' Up! decided that they would still release the papers um, so that people could still purchase those and enjoy those beautiful papers. And there's Christmas ones, there's the floral ones we're going to use today, there's the, um, uh, not tartan, what do you call it? Gingham, not gingham, it's not gingham. Um, oh, you know those ones. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out, people. Um, what do you call it? Buffalo check. No, is it buffalo check? I don't know. Anyway, go and check them out in the online store. <laughs> um, yeah, they're really, really beautiful. I'll just pop that over there. Now, also, too, if you um, are watching on my YouTube channel, or perhaps if you want to go and check out my YouTube channel to see previous videos, um, feel free to jump over there and do that. Remember that you can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you um, like what you see, and then you can click on the little net, uh, bell notification so that you can then choose how you'd like to be notified whenever I upload new videos. So um, yeah, so that way you'll never miss out on anything. So that's really cool. Also too, if you're not yet following or liked my page, I think now on business pages, I think it's changed from liked to following or follow. 
um, just click on that at the top of the page too so that then you'll be sure to um, get notifications whenever I post here on my business page too so that you make sure you don't miss out on anything because I know I've got a lot of people who um, come to my page but they're not yet following and so you know they're only going to see things if they pop in from time to time um, but yeah so be sure to follow my page so that um, you don't miss out on anything um, Zana said, it looks grey and yuck out your window. Oh, no, you're still in bed. Oh, good, good. Good place to be at 7.12 in the morning. Well, we'll be, what will it be now? 7.19. We'll be 7.19 now in the morning. <laughs> um, definitely getting chilly. Ah, yes. Oh, you craft monthly with your friends at a crop. Oh, that's so awesome. Just started back after an absent couple of years. Oh, okay. Um, you last crafted on Tuesday at a friend's place. Oh, nice. Got to do a make and take in, uh, got to a make and take in two weeks. Okay, waiting for cardstock to arrive so that you can chop it and get ready. Oh, okay, you got to do a make and take for in two weeks time. Got it, sorry, I misread that. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Sounds like you've been doing lots and lots of craft. Have you started your um, Christmas projects yet, Zana? Or are you still just creating um, other other occasion cards? Oh, that sounds really nice. Oh, that's great to be um, back at the monthly crop. That's awesome. I used to, back in the day, um, oh, it was quite a few years ago now, I used to go to a monthly crop as well. They used to hold it in... Um, the activities room at a nursing home and um yeah it was really great and i think i didn't really meet a whole heap of people there i met a couple of people but i was fairly quiet and shy and not very talkative or outgoing back then i've probably built a lot of confidence i think through my um stampin up business i think i've built a lot of confidence um through that so um, I still have my shy moments, but um, yeah, I would probably be more inclined to speak to more people now. But anyway, it um, I had to stop going because it was getting difficult to get there with the children when they were very little and stuff and things happening in life. And yeah, but they, it was really great though to go to a monthly crop. Um, Rose said last Tuesday, um, she took a long time to get started. Tour of the garden was beautiful and then decided, um, then deciding what to make, but we had a lovely time chatting and crafting. That's all part of it though, isn't it, Rose, is gathering together, enjoying each other's company, having a good chat and a cuppa. Speaking of which, I've got my cuppa. I was going to tell you something about that too. Um, and um, just enjoying each other's company and then yeah the crafting often evolves throughout the day um, that's what I find actually my friend and I usually go out in the garden too because she always wants to check to see you know what's what's the latest thing that we're growing in the veggie garden and things like that and um, sometimes if you know something's in fruit or whatever I'll you know give her some to take home but we've actually got nothing growing at the moment well we have our fruit trees that are still there they're flowering um, but we haven't planted any veggies yet because our veggie garden is in the shade in the winter. So nothing actually grows there except the citrus fruits during the winter. But in the next couple of weeks, because the sun is getting higher and it's, you know, moving around, not moving around, but moving to the right position, um, the sun now gets, uh, sorry, the, the garden will start to get a bit more sun so we can start planting again for the summer now. So John said in about two weeks, two to three weeks, we'll um, go and get some plants and decide what we're going to plant. So what can I plant? Give me some ideas. What can I plant? Usually we have basil, um, cucumbers, because Amber and I eat a lot of cucumbers and we both like basil, tomatoes, of course. My tomatoes usually self sow anyway, so they'll be popping up soon. The strawberries. Oh, actually... Yes, John showed me yesterday that the strawberries have actually started to um, fruit again, which is really great. And they've self-sown. We've got an additional one in there as well now. So, so that's really cool. They're spreading and growing. So hopefully they will go well. We didn't get very many on them last year, but it was a new plant. So that could be why. Anyway, yeah. Um, Zana said, um, Karen has run this for 17 years at this venue. Oh, great. The crop, the monthly crop. Um, and you're only able to go because she's kindly, oh, picked you up and takes you. Oh, nice. 
nice. Oh, that's good. It's so lovely to have beautiful friends like that, isn't it? That will help us out. So good. Um, oh, you're not a green finger. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Do many people grow um, fresh fruit and veggies there in the UK, like in their, in their backyard and things like that, like we do over here, Zanna? Or is the weather just not really, um, the climate not really great for that over there? Yeah, I'd love, I was a bit interested to know, because here in Australia, like there's a lot of people that grow fruit and veggies, like in their veggie gardens in their backyard. Um, of course, we've got the farms and, you know, things like that, where they grow them in bulk. Um, but a lot of families like to grow fresh fruit and veggies in their own garden. So, yeah, I was wondering what it might be like over there. Anyway, all right. So we should um, get cracking, I think, for with our project today. Um, yes, and they have allotments too. Ah, so is that somewhere? So allotments, is that like where you can like rent a piece of land and plant your own garden like your own vegetable garden or something or how does that work i've not heard of that oh i've seen something similar something kind of like that like a community garden is it like that like a community garden in the usa i've seen that oh it's like that oh cool well that's awesome i don't know if we have that here in australia actually does anybody know anybody in australia know um do we have those sorts of things here like allotments where you can purchase a bit of land to put your fruit and veggie crop into or like a community garden I don't know I don't know if we have much of that over here I think it's a maybe not near where I live anyway <laughs> we had actually we had because where my where my house is we're in an estate um, we bought here 14 years ago and we were just the sixth house on this estate but all the land out here was all um, rural. It was all farming land, um, paddocks, grazing land, that sort of thing. Um, and up until just recently, there was still um, bits of land around quite close to us where they still had, they were still farming. There was a um, peach, peach and plum tree farm. There's, there is another farm that's still nearby and they do seasonal vegetables with um, I've seen spinach and kale and um, like different vegetables that they grow there. I think they're still there. Um, but yeah, a lot of the other farming lands all been bought out now and they're all, they're building all houses there. It's really sad. So we don't see the cows anymore and the horses and yeah, community gardens. Oh yes, Rose. Yes, community gardens. Oh, okay, cool. Do you have them down in Tassie, Rose? Community gardens? interested to know I should have a look around I should google that and see what community gardens there are in um in around here I don't know if there are maybe near the city they might be closer to the city because in the city there's not a lot of space and there's not a lot of um green land like there's not a lot of backyards and stuff like that closer to the city um but uh, oh you do have them down there Rose community gardens oh nice Oh, I'll have to have a look and see if there's any up here. Megan! Hi, Megan! How are you? Haven't seen you for ages. How have you been? Great to have you with us today. We're talking about um, community gardens because Zana is over in the UK and she was saying that they have community gardens over there. We're talking about veggies because I was talking about my fruit and veggie garden and uh, just saying that we're going to be planting some more veggies in the next couple of weeks ready for the summer. And, um, oh, it's good that you're good. I'm glad that you are. Um, yeah, and then she was saying that they have community garden, gardens or allotments over there. So we were just um, talking about that. And I said, oh, I don't know of any here in um, near me, but I thought maybe near the, nearer the city they might have them. Do they have community gardens up there, in um, up where you are, Megan? I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Anyway, well, we might get started. Let's keep chatting anyway. Have you got your, um, oh, I was going to tell you about my tea. So I posted last week about, was it last week or the week before, about my honey. And I was asking, because I love honey and I love my teas. And you might have seen I did a Facebook Live um, a couple of weeks ago and, and shared all my, my teas um, and my tea and coffee cupboard. Well, mainly tea cupboard because I only have coffee in there for vis visitors. I don't drink it. 
Um, and I was talking about honey through the week as well because it's um, National Honey Month in the UK. So um, I was asking people what flavors of honey they liked and I was like, oh, I really want to try that. I really want to try that. I really want to try that. So I started researching to find um, maybe some local honey farms that I could support locally, um, et cetera, et cetera. The nearest local one has actually moved. They were very local and I thought, perfect, I'll go, I'll support the locals, I'll buy some of their beautiful fresh raw honey. And then when I searched a bit deeper, I found out that at the beginning of this year, they moved further away. So I thought, oh, well, I can't get to there where they are now easily. Um, so I thought, well, I'll have a look online and see if I can find a place. So I found somewhere in Queensland, actually not far from where my daughter lives, um, and they do all the different flavoured honeys and their, their, you know, natural honeys and it, anyway, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, oh, wow, like these sound amazing. And I thought I will order one of the little sample boxes. And in the sample box, you, got, you get six different flavours of honey. And then it's like a little taste test box. And the little bottles, they're about that big. So I think they're about, I don't know what are they, about 125 mils or something. Like they're only little bottles. But I've got six different flavours. So I had a lot of fun when they came, taste testing them, working out which one I liked. And then I lined them up in the, um, the, the order that I liked them. And interestingly, I liked them from the lightest one first through to the darkest one. And the darkest one, I'm not fussed on at all. Um, but I thought that's really interesting. Like the flavors are very different in them. But once I worked out which ones I liked, I then lined them up and it turned out it was lightest to darkest. So go figure. <laughs> anyway, today I have got uh, in my tea, I've got um, French Earl Grey today, which is uh, the Twinings French Earl Grey. Oh uh, no, just, did I pick up French? Yeah, French Earl Grey. Twinings French Earl Grey. And I've got... Um, rainforest rainforest honey in my tea today and um i haven't actually taken a sip yet because it was too hot before i went live so let me see oh that's beautiful that is so yummy oh my goodness <laughs> i'll have to do a live about my new honeys and show you all oh my goodness but it's so fun taste testing them all i'll tell you what i had sugar overload <laughs> But, um, oh, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And I got some Manuka honey as well for medicinal um, purposes to keep in the cupboard for when we get any coughs or colds or sore throats or anything. Um, and it's also good for healing, depending on the grade of your um, Manuka honey, but I made sure I got the, the high grade one. And um, it's also good for infections. So, yeah, so there you go. A little bit of honey, honey background for you. Um, Megan says there is a community garden in South Bank. Oh, okay. There you go. Mostly herbs and some fruits for people to use. Oh, that is so cool. Love that. Now where, tell me, Megan, where is South Bank in regards to the Gold Coast? So say where Southport is or surfers, where is South Bank situated? I should have a look on the map. Um, but I've got a friend, or my, my old boss actually, she had stayed at South Bank before and she said how lovely it was. And then when my, my daughter moved up there, she was always talking about Southport. And I thought, oh, it must, must have been Southport that my boss was talking about. But now that you say South Bank, I'm thinking, no, it actually was South Bank. So, yeah, where is that? How, where is the, uh, yeah, you'll have to let me know. Um, Zana said, allotments are your own space as community gardens are shared space. Oh, got it. Okay, cool. So there is a difference, right? Uh, Megan said, there's a lot of community gardens up there. Uh, Zana is in a small city. Um, she said, I don't think, but not sure, there's any allotments out in the sticks. Oh, okay, probably, yeah, pro that makes sense actually. Probably where they're out in the country areas where there's more land i guess they wouldn't really need them hey because people would probably have land um but we grow a lot of veggies here oh that's awesome megan said we also have a lot of local people selling fresh honey around us as well oh 
That's awesome. That's so good. South Bank is just over the bridge from the city. Oh, so the city of Brisbane? South Bank is just over the bridge from the city. So the city of Brisbane is that. I, I'm waiting for you to respond. <laughs> I'm imagining that's where it would be. Okay. Oh, well, that makes sense. So it's not the Gold Coast. It's further north. Okay. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, we better get started. Let me know in the comments still, Megan, while I'm setting up and getting ready. Um, I'm going to tip the camera down to the desktop so we can get started, but I will just cover up first. I'll cover the camera so I don't make you dizzy. Here we go. Bear with me one moment. All righty. We'll do a flip and a flip. There we go. Okay. Bring my camera out where it needs to be. Tighten everything up for you all. City of Brisbane. Okay. Oh, hey, Beryl. Beryl jumped on there too. She's answering for you. Oh, there we go. She's answering for you, um, Megan. Must are you, You're up that way too, Beryl. Are you? There we go. How is that looking? Let's see. Let's see. There we go. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. Yes, City of Brisbane. Um, Megan said, yes, the city and South Bank are divided by the river. Oh, okay. There is a couple of walk bridges to get across. It's where Expo 88 was. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. I never went up there for that, um, but... I know some people that did, so yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, learn something new every day. Okay, so South Bank is Brisbane, South Port is Gold Coast. Got it. Um, Zana said, if you use your local honey, it helps build up against allergens. Yes, actually. Um, I think the Manuka one I got, it said something about that too when I was reading the information about it. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Sana. Uh, Beryl said, no, I'm in Mareeba on the Tablelands, North Queensland. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. You're for further north. Oh, lovely. Um, I think there is also a Southport down near the Gold Coast. Yes, my daughter lives near Southport on the Gold Coast. Yep. So that's why I was getting confused between Southport and South Bank. But I've got I've got them sorted now. <laughs> um, Megan says, next time I'm there, I will take some photos and send them to you. Oh, lovely, Megan. That, oh, that would be so nice. Thank you. Fantastic. Yes, Southport is definitely on the Gold Coast. Yeah, my daughter lives, um, uh, I think, the next suburb up from Southport. Yeah. Oh, there you go. But she's going through Southport all the time to get to work. She drives through Southport. Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at what we are playing with today. So if you haven't seen this yet, oh, there's a little sneaky peek then. If you haven't seen this yet, um, this is the Translucent Florals. And I forgot to grab my catalogue. Hang on a sec. How could I forget my catalogue? <laughs> Translucent Florals Bundle. So you've got the stamp set. Uh oh, hang on a sec. I'm dropping things here. Pop that over there. That's my instructions I'm dropping. Um, and you've got the dies as well. I'll take the dies out of the packet because we're going to be using them anyway. But I'll show those to you up a little bit closer. Just move the packet out of the way. All right, so these are the dies. Oh, lights. Lights would help, wouldn't they? I forgot to move the lights. Here we go. There, is that better? You can see now. <laughs> We're in the half dark. <laughs> oh, dear. Too busy chatting. That's the, that's the thing. It's too busy chatting and not concentrating on what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> oh, your internet's playing up. You're going to watch the replay, Megan. No worries. Well, it was lovely to chat with you, Megan. Thank you for joining us. All right. So um, in this um, set, let me show you where to find it first in the catalogue. Um, 
let's see. So in the back, so this is the September to December 2023 mini catalog. In the back, you can find all of the um, stamp sets, the dies, the embossing folders. Um, but if you go back a couple of pages before that, you'll have all of the bundles listed as well. Okay, so you see all of them there. Um, we've got the translucent floral bundle here. And we can see it in action on page 56. So it tells us down here. Now, remember when you buy the bundle with the stamps and the dies, if you buy them together, um, you'll save yourself 10%. Okay, rather than buying one now and one later, you'll pay full price. So if you want to save yourself a bit of money, um, get them together and um, get the bundle. And that's the bundle code down here. Um, let's have a look on page 56. Oops, went past it. There they are. So there's a, a big image of the, um, the stamp set. You've got some beautiful um, ideas there. Um, even this idea here with colouring some vellum and um, with your stamp and blends and then die cutting to make these beautiful flowers. I've got some samples to show you of that. But we've got some great sentiments here in this one. Um, but there's the code there if you're looking for this one. It's on page 56 of the mini catalogue. And again, you've got your bundle um, code down the bottom there. All right, so that's where you'll find it. Hang on, I'm just making space for everything. Okay, so this is a cling stamp set. They are red rubber. Now, I've taken out the ones that we're using today already. Um, but you can see they are the red rubber stamps there. So um, they're really great. And they're distinctive stamps. So they've got different um, sort of opacities. Like you've got the shading built into the stamp. So you stamp in just one color, but it looks like you're stamping in multiple shades because of the different um, shadings built into the stamp, which is really awesome. Lots of beautiful sentiments. Um, we've got dies that coordinate with each of these elements. Okay, then you've got these additional solid dies. And let me show you. Oh, and you've got these additional flowers as well. Oops. And some centers, some flower centers as well. So this one, this one, this one, this one. And then these solid ones here. Let me show you some samples. So any of you that might be demonstrators might have seen these before because um, about, oh gosh, I don't even know what month it was. Was it June or July? Might have been July. We had a, a demonstrator event called um, Creativity Now and we made some projects using this bundle. So I'll take it out of the plastic so you can see. I've saved them to show you when I was going to use this um, bundle. So this one here is just a really simple little project. And this here is using those dies. So these ones here, it's using these little ones here. And we colored some vellum first with Stampin' Blends. And then we die cut a couple of these and then layered them on top of each other. And then we did the same with the leaf, colored that with Stampin' Blends and then die cut. Um, Use the deckled rectangles to cut the sentiment piece and the stripes and splatters embossing folder for the background. So that's just a really, really... Oh, and we've got stamped leaves there as well. So we did use um, one of the stamps as well as a sentiment stamp. So that's just a really easy, basic um, project. This one, this layer and this layer are mounted up on Stampin' Dimensionals. But isn't that beautiful? Just the white on white with a little pop of colour. And then we stepped that one up and did this one. Same layout, but this time we used some of the spotted vellum. I'll hold that up a little bit closer. We used some of the spotted vellum and we did a large flower and a small flower. And we used the two different colors or the two different shades of the Calypso Coral, I think it was. Um, we used some of, we used also the, um, the leaf, leaf vellum and colored some of that for those leaves there. And then we added some extra stamped leaves. So just stepping it up slightly from that to that. And that's using these dies here, these solid ones. 
Is that so cool? So you can do that as well with coloured cardstock, with designer series paper. Now the designer series paper we're using today as well, I believe that you can die cut some of those images with some of these outline dies as well. So we'll have a look at the paper in a moment. So that's those two. And then we did some, um, now I've given one of these away. This was the stepped up version. But I've given the original one away. Um, but we used the stamps for this one here, for this one. And we've actually cut two. We've stamped and cut two for here. And then we've used this one in the background. This is just on, um, is this grey granite or basic grey smoky slate? One of those, I can't remember which one it was. But for this in the background here, what we did is we made our own stencil by die cutting onto a piece of cardstock these leaves. So we just positioned those, die cut them, made our own stencil or mask, and then popped that on our card. Which way did mine go? This way. Ran our textured paste over the top of it to create those in the background. So you've got that texture of the textured paste in the background, and then you've got the stamp and die cut images on top. Isn't that cool? And then your sentiment with the um, the deckled edge, a little bit of ribbon, and there you go, a little bit of bling. So isn't that beautiful? And then this one, now this one has two, two versions as well, a basic version and a stepped up version. This one, we've stamped the large flower, this one here, in the background. So just on tone on tone in the background. And then we've used both of these flowers and the stem and the leaves to create the flowers on the front. Die cut it with a deckled rectangle, popped a sentiment on there, bannered the ends, just snipped the ends at an angle, added some embellishments, and there you go, you've got a beautiful card. So that on its own is gorgeous, but then stepped up, we have this one. So lots of samples to show you today. I should have saved these till the end, shouldn't I? And showed you at the end, but that's okay. Um, so with this one, we've stamped onto vellum and then die cut it. And then we've created an extra border. So this layer here is popped up. Um, and this layer here of the frame is stuck flat. So it sort of gives it a bit of a, um, a bit of a lift. But yeah, same basic, same basic layout. We've just staggered these flowers a little bit rather than doing them side by side. I've staggered them there and just moved the sentiment over, added an extra layer. But yeah, stamping on the vellum is great. You just, if you're stamping onto vellum though, you need to set it aside and allow it time to dry. So it does take a while for the ink to dry on the vellum. So that's just a little tip for you. So there you go. So there's some little samples. Now I do have, um, I do have another sample of a card that we are using the same products from today's, um, but I might save that one till the end. But we're using um, same products, but it's a different layout. But I think I'll save that one till the end for you. So stick around and I'll show you that one too. All right, let's have a look at the beautiful paper and then we'll jump on in. So this is the Delightful Floral 12 by 12. Um, this one has 12 sheets. And um, I think I've got, have I got additional sheets in here? Two, five, six. Oh no, oh no. I thought I had additional sheets in here. I thought, oh, did I get an extra pack? These, are, these ones feel really thick actually. I don't know, sometimes I think some of the designer series paper feels thicker than others. Um, oh, Zanna said, very pretty. You like all those projects, Zanna? They are gorgeous, aren't they? All right, so this is the paper that was designed to coordinate. Look at that. We've got the beautiful flowers on there. So let's have a look with those dies and see if any of these, I think these ones are larger. They might be slightly different shapes too. Um, let's see. Oop. Go that way. No, they're different sizes. Okay, so that one doesn't die cut, but you could certainly fussy cut them with your paper snips. It wouldn't be too hard to cut those out. 
And we also do have the craft blade for the take your pick tool now as well for more detailed precision cutting. So if you haven't seen those, um, we do have the uh, um, attachments in um, the online exclusives. Uh, I think, oh, are they actually? Hang on, let me check that. Are they in the online exclusives or are they in the mini? Let me see. Very good question. In fact, I just gave Callie the box from that to play with the other day with some treaties in it. And she chomped it up. So I don't have the box now to tell me. I think it must have gone into the online exclusives because I don't think it's... No, it's not in the mini. Let me have a look for you. I'll just tell you where to find them. Uh, oh, Zana said, oh, no, yet another set that's popped into the need list. <laughs> Oh, is it in the annual catalogue, Julie? Oh, thank you. All right, let me just have a little looky over here. Let me bring, I've got my keyboard here. Let's have a little search. Let's have a little search. Just see if my, um, I might need to log back in over there. See if it's going to cooperate or not. No, it's going to take its time, I think. All right, let's just see. Let's have a look and see if I can find it for you. Okay, hang on one sec. Let's log in. Ah, that's wrong. Hang on a sec. <laughs> see now all right so I'll put in oh actually hang on a sec let me just go over here to the online store and have a look I just want to have a quick check to see where it is if I type in take your pick there it is okay so take your pick crafters tips is what they're called and I've put mine in here in my little caddy. So it's the Take Your Pick Crafters Tips and you get the um, rotary blade, which is like a scoring um, a scoring blade. It's got a little protector there. You get the craft knife, which screws in to this end here. Sorry, this is just on. I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent now, haven't I? <laughs> so there's your craft blade. Okay, so for cutting those finer little details. And do you know, I used to, back in the day when I first started crafting, we didn't fussy cut anything with scissors. We used a craft knife for everything. We cut everything out with a craft knife. We didn't use paper snips. So there you go. Um, and what was the other one? The other one is the um, double-ended... Um, pokey pokey tool so it's got a finer a finer pokey tool on that end so this is the one that comes with it and then this is the other one so if you need a finer tip that's my rings are twisting so that's the other tip and then on the other end you have a little hook end. so that's great for um getting getting little bits out of your dies and things like that, lifting things up, um, all sorts of things like that. So almost looks like a dentist tool, doesn't it? <laughs> so there you go. So that's what you get in the Take Your Pick Crafters tip. Let's make sure I put that back on around the right way so I don't damage my hook. There we go. Okay, so I'll take my craft tip, tip off there because I want my putty end back on so that's how easy all of the um the tips work they just those ones screw in and out and these ones are twist you just twist take it out we've got our little spatula end mine is actually broken because i cracked it um and then you twist it back in again and we've also got so when you buy the take your pick tool it comes with the stylus as well um, so I've got a couple because I've got a couple of take-your-pick tools, but it comes with one stylus 
um, and then you can get the refill putty heads as well. I think when you buy it, it does come with a putty head. Um, I think it comes with one refill. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, I think it comes with a spare a spare putty tip when you purchase it as well. So you get that, that, and that when you purchase it. And then the additional kit, if you want them, is those three. They come together. Okay. Oh, no. These three. Sorry. I got that wrong. These three. They come together. Yeah. And then the putty heads, you can purchase them separately. All right, so that's a little bit about the Take Your Pick tool. It is my most used craft tool in the craft room, I think, apart from my um, paper trimmer. I think this one is the one. Oops, hang on, let's put these back in here. My cute little box my friend made for me. All right, let's get back to looking at this beautiful paper. Okay, so that is um, set number one. I mean, paper number one. And on the back, we've got these beautiful watercolors. Now I'll go more quickly with the other ones. We've got some green watercolor. We've got some beautiful um, smaller floral images there. Some Calypso coral watercolor. Cute little, how pretty are these flowers? Just so pretty and I love the colors. So we've got some soft um, bluey green. I don't know what color that one is actually. Is that um, pool party or is that, yeah, that will be pool party. Very soft pool party watercolour. We've got some green leaves. How beautiful is that? Really beautiful pop of colour. We've got our flowers that look like they've been stamped on there. Let's see if any of those dyes fit those ones. Oh, wrong dye. Hang on a sec. I was sure some of these would die cut out with these dies. Maybe they don't. Maybe I was just imagining it. <coughs> I don't know. No, they're definitely a different size. No, they're a different size. Okay. Uh, then we've got this one. Oh, now does this one fit? Is that the same as the other one? No. Maybe I'm just not lining up the dies right. I don't know. I don't know. Has anyone die cut these ones? No, I don't think they fit. Anyway, um, there's another leafy one with some beautiful um, pretty peacock on the back and I think we are back to the beginning because these are all duplicates yeah I was sure that one of these die cut is it this one hmm maybe it's not exactly the same I reckon you know what you could die cut that though and get the detail of the flower in there. It's not quite exact. Have I got it up the right way? Yeah, no, that would be right, wouldn't it? I did have it up the right way. Anyway, I still reckon you could, yeah, you could, you know what? I reckon you could even die cut that one and get that shape, but have the detail of the flower. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. I don't know if they were um, designed to coordinate or not. But um, I thought maybe they might. Actually, those leaves, where were those leaves? Don't think, no, they're smaller than the dies. Yeah, they're smaller than the dies. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Anyway, these papers do coordinate with the stamp set um, very beautifully. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, so that's what we're going to be playing with today. Let's just pop that out the way because I've got a kit already cut ready to go. 
All right, colors we're going to be using today. Let me just come back over to my Facebook page. There we go. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Um, oh, there you go. Beryl has put up the, um, the item number for the crafter's tip, 161602. Thanks, Beryl. That's awesome. And Julie said, yes, on page 145, the Take Your Pick Crafters Tips. Okay, so it's in the annual catalogue. Oh, thank you, ladies. Thank you for your help. Fantastic. Um, Rose said, Jenny taught me paper toll with a craft knife. Yes, there you go. Yep. Um, definitely need a craft knife for paper toll. Yep. To cut out all those intricate little designs. Yep. So there you go. So these are the colours that we are using today. Lost Lagoon, Fresh Freesia, Pool Party and Parakeet. Oh, yeah, Pool Party and Parakeet Party. That threw me then because they're both parties. So we're having a party today. <laughs> so they're the colours we're going to be using. And we've got some sponge daubers as well that we'll be using for some of those colours. I'll just pop them up there. We're going to be using an embossing folder. I'll show you that when we go to use it and the gems and the ribbon. We'll do all of that um, in a moment. So this is the project that we are going to be creating today. I'm really excited about this one because it's so pretty. Look at all those pretty colours and that beautiful paper is just stunning. And a little bit of stamping in there. Super easy layout. Um, so let's get going. So I've got my kit here. I do have all of the measurements for you um, and they will be up on my blog um, as well. They're not up there yet, but I will get them up there. Um, hopefully tonight. Last week I was a little bit late with getting my blog up. I had so much um, going on last week. It was a hectic, hectic week and it took me a little bit to get my blog up. Um, I think I didn't get it up until the end of the week actually. But all right, let's quickly run through these measurements. I've got them all written up here on my instruction sheet. All right, so we have a standard card base in basic white, which is half of an A4 sheet, okay, cut across the short side. So this measures 21 centimeters by 14.85, scored and folded at 10.5. Now don't panic if you don't catch these as I go these measurements because they will be up on my blog. All right, then we've got a layer of um, uh, designer series paper, which is this one here. We're going to be using this beautiful fresh freesia. On the other side, we have those flowers, but we're using the fresh freesia watercolor look side. This one measures 10.1 by 14.45 centimeters. We've got... Um, a little layer here of the DSP as well. I think it goes, is it directional? It's not directional because the flowers are all going in different directions. So it doesn't really matter which way up. This one measures um, 10.1 by 5.5. And we're going to be doing a little bit of tearing on this one. Then we've got a layer of the pool party. And on the other side is the green leaves. But we're using the pool party side. I haven't written the colours. That's why it's throwing me. I haven't written down the colours of the um, the paper. Um, this one is... Now, which one is this one? This one is 7 centimetres by 11.5. And we're going to do a bit of tearing on this one. We've got this strip as well. This is for our sentiment. And obviously, we only, we're only we only doing a, a sentiment that long. But because it's a narrow piece... I cut a long strip because often it takes me a couple of goes. I've got a bit of ink on that side, so we might flip it over. It takes me a couple of goes to get it straight when it's when you're stamping on such a small image. If you prefer to stamp on a larger piece and then trim it down, you can certainly do that as well. But this one for the sentiment is um, 1.2 centimeters wide, and you'll end up with a six centimeter piece. Okay, once you've trimmed the ends. But I've got a longer piece. I just cut a big strip which is probably a card front. Yeah, it's 14.85, um, just so I've got a couple of goes there. And then we need a piece to do our stamping on for our um, floral images. So I've just got a card front piece size. So this is um, 
10.5 by 14.85. Okay, and then we'll have our ribbon and our bling. All right, so there are all the pieces that we're using. We're going to start off with our stamping. So let's pop the card to the side so that we can um, get our stamping happening. Now I'm going to bring in, I've got a little piece of off-cut here grid paper. I was using this one on the weekend. It was a full sheet. And this is one, uh, a piece that we were given at on stage. One of the years that we had our um, demonstrator event, our on, annual on stage event. And um, this was one from there. I think we had about five sheets of it. It's got a little bit of ink on it, um, but I'm going to use it because it's really pretty paper. And why not utilize what we already have? So I'm actually going to turn it sideways because I'm not using the measurements. I just want it to protect my surface. And look, the white the white cardstock really pops on there anyway. Okay, so we are going to stamp some of our, um, our images. So I've got them already here. Let me take a sip of tea. I'm getting breathless. Hang on a sec. Hmm. Yum. Ah, that's better. Get a bit dry when you're talking so much. Oh, you love the colours, Julie? Fantastic. I'm glad. Yeah. So tell me, Rose, do you still do any paper toll? I used to love doing paper toll. The girls and I, my girls and I, we did so much paper toll. And uh, one of my friends that I used to craft with back when the kids were younger, we did heaps and heaps of paper toll. In fact, one of our team members still does paper toll. She does beautiful work with her paper toll. Um, that's uh, Chitska. Chitska does beautiful paper toll. She's even got framed paper toll um, uh, pictures around her home she does or she does such beautiful intricate work she's very very clever um, but I used to just do paper toll cards because doing the big the big ones was a little bit overwhelming for me that I used to just do cards um, oh you you did the framed ones too you ran out of walls to hang them on <laughs> I totally understand totally understand Oh, that's so cool. I never knew that you did that. That's awesome. You and Chitska could have talks. You could have lovely chats about uh, paper toll. <laughs> oh, there you go. Or you have. You could always do some cards with um, some smaller paper toll images. That's what, that's what I used to do. I just did cards. All right, so we're going to use some Parakeet Party for our large um, leafy stamp. So we just, I'll pop that over this side because I'm right-handed. Just going to ink that up. Oh, I'm getting hot now. I think I'm talking too much. All right, so tap, tap, tap. And let's stamp that. Now watch this when I stamp it. You get all these beautiful shaded sections on the stamp. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? It looks like I've done like something fancy or something detailed around the edges of the stamp, but I haven't. I've just stamped a single stamped image because it's built that shadowing is built in or shading I should say is built into the stamp isn't that cool love that all right so I'm going to clean all of these um in a moment all at the one time just to save a bit of time because we're going to just keep on um stamping all right I'm going to do my um large flower we've got the large flower and we've got the little mini flower we're doing both of those in fresh freesia so, oh, I've got a little bit of fluff on my on my um, ink pad there. There we go. So we've got that one, and let's put this little one up here. Aren't they so pretty? So pretty. Oh, I love all these colours. They're just gorgeous. All right, and then we're oh, sorry, a bit of um, echo there, and we're going to stamp this little. I don't know what would you call this. Fern, not, it's not fernery, is it greenery? Greenery, perhaps, in uh, Lost Lagoon. So we need two of those. One. Now, this is just a solid stamped shape. A solid stamped image, I mean. There's no, um, no distinctive detail in that one. Um, and while we've got that out, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. So I'll pop those to the side to um, die cut those in a moment. And I'll stamp my sentiment, I'll try up this side, this end first, in the Lost Lagoon. All right, so we're using You're the Best. That's actually not straight on my block. Let me 
Let me put that straight on my block. Let's see, is the sticker... Oh, because the sentiment's not quite straight. That's probably... Amber put all my stamps on my block for me. That's probably why she put that one at a slight angle for me. And then I just wrecked it. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Let's see how we go. All right, let's line this up on... I like to line up my um, sentiment strips on my grid paper. It helps me to line everything up. And I'm just going to stamp it in from the edge a little bit so that I can... All right, let's see. Oh, it's a little bit... It's a little bit wonky. It's not too bad. Let's try another one. I'm just going to flip that over because I've got a little bit of ink splattered on the end there. So I'm just going to flip that over and try up this end. Wait, which way did it dip down? It dipped down at best. So I need to I need to stamp my best up a little bit higher. So let's go just at a slight angle. Oh, that's better. That's nice and straight. Okay, good. All right, well, that was good. That didn't take too long. Usually when I'm stamping, it was so funny. When my friend was over on the weekend, she's um, she was trying to quickly... Um, finish her card because she said no 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 I'll finish it I'll put it all together when I go home and well and Amber and I were like no you need to go home with at least one finished card so you have to finish it off stick everything down so um, we we're making her stick everything down and um, then she's like okay well you can stamp my sentiment for me because it was a really really tiny it was one of those little itty bitty it was a retired one it was an itty bitty um, sentiment uh, itty bitty Christmas I think it was from the itty bitty Christmas sentiments anyway and I said okay no worries I'll quickly stamp that for you while you start to put everything else together and oh my goodness we were in stitches because it took me six goes to get it right <laughs> and she said oh my goodness she said well I'm glad it's not just me and that um you know experienced stampers can you know not get it right too <laughs> I make mistakes too. Oh, it was it was funny. We were in absolute stitches. And poor little Callie, my little dog, she was beside herself because she gets upset when people get in fits of the giggles. I think we think that it's that she thinks that people are crying or hurt or something like that. Um, and we think it stems back from when my back was really bad last year um, and I was not in a great way at the beginning of last year. Anyway, we think that it's come from there. So we were in fits of giggles. Callie was barking her head off because she was worried about what was going on and what was happening and she didn't understand. <laughs> and we're like, stop laughing. <laughs> oh, we had fun. We had fun. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to bring in my... Um, my stamp and cut and emboss machine and we're using the big daddy today because um, I could use the little one but we are going to emboss as well so we'll use the big machine I've got it right here beside me oh it's just a bit heavy there we go and I have to put it sideways to fit it on screen so that you can see excuse all the bits of washi tape I do reuse my bits of washi tape um, so they look a little bit tacky but on my machine, but they are there because I reuse them. I want to be thrifty and reuse them. All right, now my plates, let's just flip these because these ones are my very, very used ones. So they are getting a little bit warpy. Hang on, let me have a look. Um, I was trying to see if I've got one that's not quite as warped. That one might be a little bit better. I do have a new plate there that I might need to pull out. That's a bit better. Um, yeah, because if your plates start to get a bit warped, that's usually when you need to um, start to think about replacing them because then um, it puts a lot of pressure on your rollers. And just keep, every time you use your plates on either machine, whether it's the big plate, the big machine or the mini, um, just flip your plates every time you use them and position your dies in different places on your plates as well so you're not always using the same. I'm trying to see where that stem is. Where is it? Such a light colour, it's hard to see. I think it's about there. Um, 
yet so that you don't wear your plates out too quickly. But you can purchase replacement plates if they do get too chopped up and they start to get a bit warped. Then you can just um, purchase some replacements. Okay, so we've got that bit. Um, what's the next one we need? The flower, this flower. There we go. Um, Zana said maybe she'll benefit from calming, calming plug. Oh, the calming plug in. Yes, when you have people over whom you know will be laughing. <laughs> Put it on a couple hours beforehand. Good idea. Do you know what? Um, we used to use one with our last dog as well. And I never think to get it. I, was, I think I need to buy a refill for it, actually. I've got the um, the plug-in thingy, but I don't think I've got the, um, the preparation stuff that you put in it, the pheromones. I don't know. If I do, I'll have to have a look and see what I've got there. I might need to buy a refill for it. But yeah, thanks for reminding me of that, Zana, because somebody else reminded me of that a little while ago too, and I was like, oh yeah, I need to get that out, but then I forgot again. So I need to definitely do that. Um, now I'm just looking for my little die. There it is, my little one for this one. My little teeny tiny one. So line that up. And this one must be, is it that one? Ah, oh, it is that one. I was thinking, wait, that doesn't look like the right dye, but it is. It's that one. A calming collar. Ah, oh, I wouldn't probably put a good suggestion. Thank you, Zana. But um, our little Callie has a lot of allergies and sensitivities. So I probably wouldn't put anything on her directly, like on her collar or anything but it's probably better to have it in the atmosphere so I think the the plug-in one sounds like it would be the best idea for um for Callie yeah she's a she's a little bit special our little girl she's um she's got quite quite a bit going on that poor little girl all right here we go so let's see take that all through whoop Ooh. Oh, I need to stand up for this one. Hang on a sec. That's better. When you're die cutting so many things, you need a little bit more oomph. There we go. So do you have pet Zanna? Sounds like you've had experience with um, anxious pets. Oh, look, that one moved. That one's a little bit off. That's okay, though, because we're going to tuck it in. So that should be all right. And that one's good. All right, so we'll just take these off. I'm going to show you. I don't know if I showed you. I think because I only had showed my friend on the weekend. But I bought this cool little metallic dish just from the local um, hardware store from Bunnings. And it's got a big magnet on the bottom. And you can just... I don't want to put it on my machine, actually, because it might adhere to my machine. Hang on a sec. <laughs> then I'll be in all sorts of trouble. And what you can do, and it's got a rubber foot on it, so you, it stays put, and it's quite heavy. When you're crafting, you just chuck your dies in there quickly, and then you won't lose them. And especially, it's I've got to be careful around here with the dog, because she picks up everything. And then I can put them away at the end. How cool is that? And that saves me time as well. Look at this little one. And they adhere to the... Look, and if I tip that upside down, they don't come out. Isn't that cool? And that was just from Bunnings, just from our local hardware store. All right, we've got one more here to cut. So I'll get that die back again, actually. Oh, this one. And I'll line this up here. like so get that lined up in the right spot i hope that's in the right spot is it in the right spot hang on a minute oh, i just moved it i just moved it there we go yep okay um all right 
So we'll put that one back on. There we go. Oh, it's a bit easier to crank through this time with just one in there. Now, while we've got this out, we will do our embossing as well. So there's, oh, where did it go? There it is. There's our other little piece. I think I put that down on, yeah, I did too. Move them over there. Excuse me, reaching everybody. Okay, so I'll take that die off there so we don't misplace that one. And we'll pop that in my magnetic bowl. There we go. Okay, good. Now, we're going to do some embossing. Um, so, the one that we're going to do use is the Painted Textures 3D Embossing Folder. And we need the large machine for this one because this is um, this is a bit bigger than the mini machine. I love this one. This is so beautiful. Actually, I love most of our embossing folders. I just love texture. All right, so this piece here that is going to be the background, we're going to put that through with the embossing folder. Now, this is a 3D embossing folder. So we want to use our base plate we put down our 3D embossing folder and then we grab out our number four gray plate and that goes over the top. We put our embossing folder in with the hinge first. Okay, so the part that opens. So that goes through first so that we don't damage our embossing folder. And I am gonna need to stand up for this one. Let's have a look. Beautiful. Look at that texture. Can you see that texture there? And that just is now added to that beautiful paper. Isn't that gorgeous? Looks stunning. All right, let's move. Let's move mummy machine out of the way. Oh. Okay, so there we go. So that is, in case you missed it, that is the Painted Texture 3D Embossing Folder. This is one of probably my most used ones. Um, yeah, I love it. Love, love, love it. All right, and now what we're going to do is, while we're playing with ink, is we'll get our Fresh Freesia ink and our Dauber, and we're going to ink around the edges to just give that a little bit of a lift. You know I love my sponge daubers. But this is just a fantastic technique and it's just so quick and easy. Anybody can do this. The sponge daubers, if you're looking for them, they come in a pack of five. And um, you can find them in the colouring tool section of the annual catalogue if you've got the annual catalogue. Or just um, search for them in the um, online store up in the search tab up on the top right hand side there's a little search bar you just type in sponge daubers and um, you'll find them there otherwise just look in um, coloring tools here we go now we've got a lovely border around the edges there we go um, oh your your cat is a strange little girl and we have to use, have to use all. She's got worse as she's gotten older. Yep, her brother is a total opposite. Um, you've always had cats. Um, you had your last dog for 20 years. Oh my goodness, that's a really big age for a dog. Um, he was henpecked by three cats. One cat was his best friend. Oh, when he no longer was able to jump, up on the sofa, the cat took the sleeping took to sleeping on the floor with him. Oh, that's so beautiful! In the end, um, we'd take the cat for a walk, and the dog might follow. Oh, <laughs> or took the dog to the top of the road uh, on a slope upwards, and Tosh would walk down. Oh, that's so beautiful! Oh, wow, twenty. For a dog, that is amazing. That is such uh, an old age for a dog. That's brilliant. 
All right, so let's do our sentiment now. I'm just going to run along the edges with the, um, my bone folder because I'd actually cut the paper the other side and so it had pushed those edges down. So I'm just smoothing them back down and then we're just going to trim that up with our little paper snip scissors and we're going to go this way this end and we're going to do the same on the other end let's bring that out a little bit there we go so there we've got our little bannered ends probably my angles aren't quite exactly the same actually we do have dies. Oh, that one's a bit close. That one's a bit far away. Um, I'll go down a bit more at an angle. Less of an angle. There we go. That's better. Okay. So we're going to use a little bit of um, ink around the edges of this one too. And we're using the... What did I use? Lost Lagoon, didn't I? Lost Lagoon for that one. Yep. Lost Lagoon. Whoops. Oh, bumped my iPad. It fell down. Then, once we've done these bits, we're going to do a little bit of tearing on some of those other pieces, and then we can just whack it all together. And it should be quite quick to um, put it all together. I do have a little tip with the, um, the florals before we adhere them down. Now remember too that you can come back and watch this video again if you want to create this project and if you don't have the products yet um, but you decide that you want to um, purchase them, you can always come back and watch this video later if you would like to, um, to create these projects. All right, so we've got all of those bits. We've got that bit. Let's do some tearing on these other two pieces. All right. We'll do this piece first. We're just going to tear across the top. Okay, so this is our pool party piece. I'm just going to give a little bit of a tear across the top, just supporting the paper with our other hand as we do that, and just tearing towards yourself in little bits at a time. If you were to just tear one big long strip, this white edge would end up really big and ugly. So we just want to do it like that. All right, we're going to ink that one. Now you might like to keep this piece for another project because you've got that lovely white edge on the other side. So keep that. You can use that on another project. But while we're tearing, we're going to tear the bottom edge of the floral piece. Now, as I said, the florals go in all different directions. So you can decide which way you like it. It doesn't really matter. And then again, we're just going to tear towards ourselves. So make sure you've got the piece that's going to be facing up or the design that's going to be facing up, facing you. And you're going to tear in just little increments. Notice I'm moving my left hand down as I do this to support the paper behind so that it doesn't tear out of control. We've got control when we do it that way. Okay, so that's going to be our bottom piece. Again, this is another little torn piece. This is only a really tiny piece. I probably won't, won't keep this one. I probably wouldn't use that on anything, but if you think you might use it on something, then definitely keep it. Okay, there we go. So we're going to do a little bit of inking on this one, and this time we're going to use the pool party. So I'll get my pool party dauber. And we're not going to ink along the top. I'm going to leave that white edge there. We're just going to ink along the other three sides. Okay. Does anybody else like to use this sponging technique? Do you use this on your projects? Let me know in the comments. All right, there we go. So that just gives us a nice little border and just, because that is a very pale color too, it just lifts it a little bit. Alrighty, and now we are ready to start putting everything together. So we've got all of our layers. 
okay and we've got our base there too so we might start by putting those all together but the florals we're going to put those together before we put them onto our project so i'm going to show you how we're going to do that so let's grab some uh, multi-purpose liquid glue and i've got mine in my little stand here and i've got a spare one because this one's nearly empty so we'll start by adhering make sure we've got our card base up the right way have you ever done that have you ever stuck your card base uh, your pieces to your card base up the wrong way i have <laughs> i've done that haven't done it for a long time thankfully but i have done it in the past like oh my goodness all right so we're just gonna pop that down Oh, we'll slide that around. I love that with the uh, multi-purpose liquid glue, we can slide that around to um, get that lined up in the middle. Um, oops, hang on, let me just scroll up. Um, do, 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 do. Beryl. Oh, thank you, Beryl. Beryl has put the code for sponge daubers in the comments for us. Thank you so much, Beryl. Um, sponge daubers, item number 133733, page 137 of your annual catalogue. There you go. Thank you, Beryl. I love all this help. This is fantastic, making it so much easier for me. Um, Zana said it broke her heart when they had to um, visit the vets last time with him. Oh, he was your baby. Yeah. Oh, but it was time. He was a one-off. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. It breaks your heart, doesn't it? I just, yeah. I've had to do that with a few of my dogs and it's a really hard decision. It just breaks your heart. And the last, after the last one, who was our, our um, baby, because our other dogs had been outdoor dogs. Um, although our Sophie, she became an indoor dog in the last few months because she was really sick. She had leukemia and she got, oh, come on, just that tiny little bit more. Come on, just on the edge there. Oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. Yay. <laughs> and um, we had to bring her inside for her last few months while we, while we cared for her. And um, yeah, but then the one we got after that, Molly, um, she was, now we're just putting this up about, I don't know what it is, about a centimetre or so from the bottom. Um, Molly was our first indoor dog, our first baby. Because my husband always said we would never have an indoor dog. Because he didn't, he wasn't a dog person, he was a cat person. We had cats, the cats had been inside. Um, we can't have cats anymore because I and all the children are allergic now. Um, but yes, he had always said no dogs in the house because he wasn't a dog person. And then we got Molly and guess what? Molly was a, an indoor dog. And it, okay, I'm going to open up my new glue. And it started out that um, Molly at first was not only allowed in the living areas. And then gradually as the years went on, you know, she was allowed in the bedrooms. Now I've got to get this one flowing. Come on, here we go. Um, but never on the beds. And then when we moved here to this house, um, she was allowed yeah she had access to all areas <laughs> except on the beds she wasn't allowed she was never allowed on the beds um so yeah so when she passed away we were absolutely devastated because she was our baby and she was the princess of the house and she was such she had such a beautiful nature little molly she used to get so excited when all my class ladies came and she would oh do you know what i didn't do i didn't stick my ribbon oh no i'm so busy chatting i forgot my ribbon oh the ribbon was supposed to go on this layer before i stuck it i wonder if i can still would it still be wet enough to get it up i wonder i wonder i wonder uh oh uh oh uh-oh, and my spatula has died, so I can't even get my spatula in there. Oh, no. See, come back and do this later. I'm so busy having a nice chat that I forgot to... Um... Do you know what? I might be able to cheat. I might be able to slip it in under there. 
I'll see if I can get my... So my spatula is actually broken on here. It's just sitting there. But if I hold it carefully and I'll just see... Let me see this. I'll see if I can sneak this in here. I might be able to sneak my ribbon in under there and cheat. So you're supposed to stick all these layers together before you put them on the card base. But I forgot because I was chatting. But that's okay. I love chatting with you all. But it just means I don't concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> not good at multitasking today some days I am okay let's okay so I've got that up normally with your ribbon you would wrap it around and then tie a bow but I'm gonna have to cheat today and okay here we go yes anyway so when Molly died we were absolutely devastated and um, we got Kali shortly after because we were not coping with losing our little baby. So now we have Kali baby and um, Kali baby is a lot of work. She's got a lot of special needs. <laughs> so <laughs> she's got a lot going on. But we love it a bit anyway. All right, I'm going to put a little glue dot on there and I'm going to try and slip that in under there. All right, surgery time. Here we go. All right, so lift that. Oh, my goodness. I hope Amber's not watching. I'll be giving her an absolute heart attack right now. She'll be like, oh, my goodness, Mother, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, okay, let's see if we can slip this in under here. Okay, this is. see, I do make boo-boos, everybody. I'm not perfect, just like all of you. I make boo-boos just because I've been doing this for a long time does not mean that I do not make boo-boos. Oh, I wish I hadn't have put that glue dot on there. That's making it really hard to get in there. Let me pull that back off. There we go. Shredded. Oh, she is watching. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Stop watching, Amber. Turn it off. <laughs> See, look, I'm just showing everybody how if you make a boo-boo, not to panic, but you can fix it. So that's all. So I'm just doing I'm just doing a good demonstration here of how you can fix a boo-boo. Oh, that's not gonna stick now, is it? Oh. <laughs> Shows it's live. Yes, it certainly does, Zanna. It certainly does. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak a little bit of glue in there. Oh, my goodness. I've made this really hard for myself because I stuck that really tight. I'm going to sneak a bit of glue in there. And then I'll sneak the ribbon in. Get that ribbon in there. And then if we stick it down and hope that that holds the ribbon. Just hold that there for a moment. There we go. Ah, oh, Beryl just had a great idea. She said, yes, I saw the other day where someone used their heat gun to lift up a card. Oh, that's a good idea because it would make the glue soft, wouldn't it? There we go. I think that worked. That might have oozed just a little bit. We can clean that up. That's all right. Yes, very good idea, actually, Beryl. I should try that one day. I haven't tried that. Ugh, now I'm getting glue everywhere. Where's my, hang on, let's bring in this, this sheet because I'm just getting glue everywhere now. Making a mess, making a mess. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so this card is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would because now I've mucked up the ribbon. Right, now to do this side, we're going to have to try and hold it firm there while we tuck it in. Let's see, I'll use that spatula end. My spatula is just broken. Not just then, it had been broken. Let's see if I can hold it together. I snapped it one day um, trying to separate the layers of a card. And um, you can't buy the spatula attachment separately. You have to buy a whole new take a pick tool, which is really annoying and I've asked Stampin' Up and I said to them can we please just have 
it's so that we can just buy the attachments separately. Oh, okay, I haven't haven't unstuck that enough under there. Um, but yeah, still at the moment they don't have that available. But it would be so helpful to just be able to buy the replacement um, spatula and pokey pokey tool end because I've broken about three of these now. Oh, there we go. I got it. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Now we just need to... S oh, have I got it? I think I got it. Yay, look at that. Yay. Now I've just got to sneak some glue in there and hope that that stays put. All right. See, look at this. Well, let's, let's not just count our chickens yet, hey? And get some glue in there. I think I just added way too much glue. It's going to ooze everywhere. Oh, it is too. I got new, new, um, I went from an old glue to a new glue that now wants to run everywhere. My goodness, I'm getting in a big mess here. I'm just going to use a tissue to take off that excess glue. I do have a um a glue eraser. Does anyone use a glue eraser? They are brilliant. Um, you can find them online. Stampin' Up used to sell them, um, but they don't sell them anymore. They mustn't have been. They're one of those products that you buy once and then you probably don't ever need to buy another one again, or you might just need to buy one like one more time somewhere down the track. They're not like something that you buy like a consumable they're not something that you buy all the time okay there we go I think I salvaged that that looks stuck <gasps> Phew, look at that okay now we've got to add the bow yes I did it good and I got all that extra glue if that feels a little bit tacky oh it is a bit tacky on this side I will bring in my glue eraser and I'll just take off that excess glue there See, this is a glue eraser and it's just like a little a little rubbery thing and it just takes up that extra little, those little globby bits of glue. There we go. And I'll do the other side when it's a bit more dry. Okay, salvaged, all good. Don't panic anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me. Okay, let's continue. All right, so um, I'm going to make a little bow. Oh, my fingers are still sticky now. I'm covered in glue. <laughs> ah. Use, oh, hang on. I'm, catch up on comments. Wait a sec. Um. <laughs> uh. Oh, Zana, you said you can't tear paper. You just can't do it. Oh, yes, you have to. It gives a beautiful effect. Um, tear off pieces could be used to use the, to decorate the inside of your card. Yes, Beryl, I agree. I have done that before too. Um, Zana says, yes, she loves sponging. She does that too. Oh, look, Rose said use your heat gun too. Sorry, Rose, I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Zana said not laughing much. <laughs> oh, you know, it adds to the experience. I'm just trying to, you know, give you all a fun time and... <laughs> <laughs> show you that I'm human too <laughs> all right let's tie a bow well you know you've got to laugh hey none of us are perfect right <laughs> and I fixed it I showed you how to fix it so there you go so if you make that mistake or try the heat gun like Beryl and Rose suggested all right, there we go. So we've got a little bow there. So I'll trim that up. Got a little bit of extra ribbon there, but oh look, I'm not even going to worry today. I'm just going to trim that up. I'll need to trim that a bit shorter, I think. A bit too long. Oops. That was a. <laughs> oh my goodness, what is happening today? There. Okay. 
there's our bow so our bow is going to be attached separately on top of that strip of ribbon oh this ribbon I didn't tell you what this one was this is the lemon lime twist ribbon it's from the um, ribbon duo combo pack there's the code if you're looking for it it has the um, the other ribbon that comes with it is a wider ribbon in the petal pink and it matches with the zoo crew um, suite but you know you can use this ribbon also matches with this paper as well and with lots of other things so that's really pretty okay I will add my ribbon in a little minute but we're going to put all the other pieces together first okay so we've got that layer done now please do all those layers first then add your ribbon then add them to the card base okay and let me just double check I did put that on the right yes I did I was just wouldn't that have been terrible if I had have accidentally stuck it on upside down after I just cautioned you all about that <laughs> All right, now all of these pieces, we are going to adhere these all together first before we put them on our card because it's easier that way. And then we're going to pop the whole thing up on Stampin' Dimensionals. Now I've got to be careful with this glue because, whoops, it's running really fast because it's a new one that I just opened. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of glue to the bottom of that flower there. I'm going to tuck that in behind the leaves here like that. Just hold that there for a moment. Now, if you use your silicon craft sheet, um, it doesn't hold the glue. Things come back off it easily. So it's, um, it's a great thing when you're doing stuff like this to have underneath you so that you can just stick all your bits and then not have to worry about getting glue on your work surface or on your desktop. So pop that little one in there. Um, let's just see. Comments. Oh, can they not replace the, um, the tool? No, because I, it was my own fault. I snapped it. I think, I think the very first one that I did, they might have. Um, but yeah, this is about the third one that I've done. So I, I don't know. I haven't asked them, but I have done this a few times and it's probably my own fault because I was probably a bit rough with it. So yeah, it wasn't a legitimate, yeah, I was just a bit, I was just a bit rough and impatient, I think. <laughs> uh, um... Uh, Zana said, I use a strip of embossed cardstock if not enough ribbon. Yes, I could have done that too and tie a small bow to that. I could have done that. That was a good idea. Um, Amber says, if you had stuck it on the wrong side, you could have turned the card sideways um, instead and assembled it in a landscape orientation. That would have been a great idea. I could have. See, you could use that as a landscape orientation and then uh, um, put your your stamped images going that way. Yeah, you could. Because that would be beautiful even as a um, landscape, wouldn't it? Yeah, so this design works both ways. Great idea. All right, let's stick these little bits. Um, I'm going to pop some glue on the stem of this one. Let's do it over here so I don't get glue down there. We're going to pop that in behind here. Oops, let's bring that a little bit out. There we go. Like that. And then this one's going to go on the front. So we're putting a little bit of glue on the back of this one. Just there. And this one sounds like my hubby's finished work. I can hear him in the kitchen. And I'm going to put that one on that stem there. Like that. Join those stems up there there we go all right and now that whole piece is now easy to manage and we're going to put dimensionals on the back of that okay so let's cap our glue we can chuck out that other glue and that one can go into my little holder and let's get our dimensionals i'll just turn this back over to the other side And we're going to put 
And um, did you all see my live, was it last week? I showed about drawing the lines with a Sharpie on the backs of your dimensionals so you can see if you've removed the backings or not. That was a brilliant tip I picked up from somewhere recently and I thought, oh, that's going to make it so much easier. Now I might get some minis for those little flowers. Um, got my minis. So then I can see if I've taken the backings on, off or not without having to touch everything and see if they're still sticky. Whoops. I'll put one there as well. And I'll put one down here behind this one too. There we go. That's lots of dimensionals. That should make it nice and secure. And now as I remove them, I can see which ones I've removed and which ones I haven't because the ones I haven't removed have still got the black lines on them. It's another good little tip. There we go. All right. Okay, so now we can move that. We're going to pop this down here like this on this panel here. I'm going to have it just over the ribbon a little bit there like that. There we go. Now our little sentiment is going to go um, up here. I might actually put the bow on first so I can see where I need to sit the sentiment. So with the bow, I'm going to use some uh, mini glue dots or a mini glue dot, I should say. And I'm going to put that on the back of my bow. So just push that onto my bow there. And then that is going to go oh, after I unstick it from my fingers. <laughs> That's going to go about here. Oh, hang on a sec. A little bit of glue dot showing there. I'll just fold that down over the back so that we can't see that from the front. And we don't want that being sticky on the front either because, um, you know, it might stick to the envelope. There we go. So we'll pop that down there like that. That little bow. Cute. Cute little bow. There we go. And I'm going to need to trim this, this end up again because that's still not right. I've trimmed that one up about three times now. Oop. There we go. And now we can put our sentiment. Now the sentiment is going to um, sit about here. So we're going to need to put dimensionals on this end. And then where it's sitting up on here, because these bits are already on dimensional, we're going to put a bit of glue there on that end. So I'm going to flip it there like that so I can see how it's going to sit so I can make sure I put my dimensionals in the right spot. And in fact, I think I'm going to use some minis just there and there. Okay, take the backings off those and I'll put a little bit of glue just on this end so that can adhere to the um, leaves there. Come on, glue. There we go. Okay. So then that can sit down here like that. There we go. All right. Now our bling and then we'll be done. How are we going for time? I haven't even looked at the time. Oh, my goodness. It's getting a lot later than I thought. That's okay. We had a lovely chat, didn't we, today? A lovely chat. And that ribbon muck, that um, little boo-boo that I made just uh, slowed me down a little bit there too. But that's okay. All right, so we're going to pop... Um, oh, the embellishments that we're using are the Iridescent Rhinestone Basic Jewels. These are really pretty, these ones. They're just got so many different colors that um, throw from them and they just go so well with this paper. I'm going to pop that one there. There we go and we are done. So let's move this one. There we go. Not too bad. Turned out pretty close to the original, didn't it? There you go. What did you think? Do you like that? <laughs> Um, Zana says, 
uh, oh the sun is shining here oh good and lovely skies now that's great going to be a lovely day a lovely morning yep you're off to meet a demo friend for breakfast in a bit oh so nice have a lovely day Zanna um, great tip for marking especially for those whose eyes aren't as sharp yes with the dimensionals yes because um, I find too with my oh, and I often forget to put my glasses on when I'm crafting and so yeah it can be really hard to see if you've removed the backings or not so that is um, that's a great tip that I learned from somebody else so um, Rose says Gr looks great she loves the flowers they're so pretty aren't they and this paper is just absolutely stunning I think I've still got some sticky bits here and there on there I'll have to check that later and go back over it with my um, my little adhesive eraser I did get quite sticky <laughs> because I <laughs> made a botch of it but turned out okay in the end all good and the ribbon is quite secure now as well which is good so all good there we go um oh now i've got another one to show you before we go hang on one sec i've got one more to show you um another sample here using the same papers um this one is focusing more on the papers rather than on the stamps let me just move these to the side and this is the one here so this piece here is cut from the designer series paper so it's all been fussy cut so the craft knife here where these little tiny bits are or you could just leave the white bits in there um, the rest has been fussy cut with scissors um, beautiful I love this ribbon this iridescent ribbon so pretty look at the shine in there and we've got the designer series paper in the background there but just to soften it a little bit I've put a piece of vellum over the top um, to just soften it a little bit so that it wasn't too busy with everything else that was going on on the card so there you go so there's another idea as well again tearing those edges um, which gives you that beautiful white edge in that designer series paper so there are a few ideas I've given you today with um, with uh, with that with those products so it's the translucent florals bundle with the stamp set and the dies and some of the dies I haven't put back on there yet and then the um, the designer series paper as well so I'll put the details in the description so there you go all right so I'm going to tip the camera up just quickly so that I can say goodbye um, oh thank you everybody I'm so glad you like that hang on one sec bear with me to one sec while I just do a flippity flip okay here we go all right so let's go flip and flip there we go oh too high there we go some light so what do you think? Did that give you some ideas today? Did that um, inspire you to make some beautiful floral cards? So next week, I don't know what we're going to do next week. I'll have to see what we're... I don't like to say too much the week before I've made the decision because often things change and then I change my mind about what we're going to create. So I don't like to preempt anything just in case. But uh, let me read some of your comments here. Um, everyone is saying lovely card. And Beryl said all the cards are beautiful. I think I'll have to change to the stripes as I've been using um, highlighters. Oh, yes, for your dimensionals. Yeah. So I used, um, I just used a permanent marker. Beryl, just a Sharpie or any, any permanent marker will work. And it makes it much easier, yeah, because I think the, the highlighter one would take a while to dry on these and probably smudge a little bit because this is sort of a shiny surface, but also too would be a little bit harder to see. But the lines are, yeah, the lines are really easy to see on there. So glad you found that tip helpful, Beryl. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> you can't tear. I give you a challenge, Zana. I give you a challenge to do some tearing on a card and I give you permission to message me and show me. Well, not I not, not give you permission. I would love for you to um, message me and show me your beautiful card that you have made with the tearing technique. Believe me, you will love it. They turn out beautiful. Look at that. Look, we've got tearing on that one, tearing on that one. You can tear your DSP or tear your cardstock, or you can tear both. And it gives such a beautiful effect. It's really, really pretty. And you can even do like where you have the torn edges, you can leave them white. Like this one looks really good with the white edges because we've got the pat, the um, colored, the color, um, in the paper and then the white edge. But sometimes you can even daub it along those edges as well if you want to um, highlight those torn edges or you can just leave them as a, a raw white edge like that. But there you go. So I give you the challenge, Zana. Step up to the challenge. <laughs> oh, maybe you'll, maybe you'll, you won't fail. I showed you how to do it. Follow, follow the instructions of how I showed you how to tear. Just support the cardstock with your opposite hand as you tear. Tear towards yourself, little increments at a time so that you can control the tear. Don't try and just do one big large rip because then you won't be able to control it. So just little, little tears. Give it a, I know, you know what? You could do a practice on some scrap cardstock. There you go. If you've got some scraps left over from one of your projects, um, give it a little practice on there and see how you go. And let me know. Let me know how you go. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, Rose. Grace, uh, Rose said, great cards, Mandy. Very pretty. Thank you. I'm so glad that, uh, that you like that. All right. Well, I will let you all go. Um, remember that uh, if you are shopping with me, if you're looking for these products, go to my um, either my blog or my website and look for the shop button. It'll be at the top of both of those, so you can shop at either of those. Remember to use my host code for September if you're shopping before the end of the month. This is my September 2023 host code, and all orders over $75 receive a thank you gift from me. The, we've got the beautiful um, September tutorial bundle this month with 55 project tutorials in that bundle. You'll get that for free if you shop with me. Um, if you already have your own Stampin' Up! demonstrator or you are a demonstrator yourself and you would like to get your hands on that tutorial, send me a message or an email at mandyspapercraftcreations at gmail.com um, and uh, you're able to purchase that for $28. So um, that's how much it's valued at, 28 Australian dollars. And you get that for free if you shop with me and spend over 75. But otherwise you can purchase it outright if you like. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter, remember to do that as well so that I can keep you up to date with all the latest specials and everything that's happening in Stampin' Up. Um, and my classes coming up and all of those things, all the Stampin' Up news. So be sure to subscribe to my newsletter and you can do that via my blog. Okay, so if you go to my blog, you can subscribe um, there. There's a subscribe button there for you. Um, if you'd like a catalogue, let me know. And if you would like information about joining my team, the Paper Craft Gems, then please let me know as well. And I'd love to have a chat with you and give you some information about that as well. But I will let you all get on with the rest of your evening or if you're in the UK like Zana, uh, the rest of your day. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And um, I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. We will be in Daylight Savings by next week. So uh, Daylight Savings starts for us on Sunday. So we will be in daylight time, daylight savings time. So it'll be Australian Eastern daylight time from next week, which will be the 2nd of October. It's actually, I think it's actually a public holiday here, but um, each day is the same to me because, <laughs> because I work from home. So um, yeah, I will still be going live regardless. So I look forward to seeing you all there and um, yeah, take care. Have a great week. 
and happy crafting. See you all soon. Bye-bye.